me that the Lord is pleased. Uh, the worship touched the heart of God. The Bible says that God is looking for true worshipers. True worshipers who will worship Him in spirit and in truth. Hallelujah. Spirit and truth. What is truth? The Word of God. His Word is truth. When you pray somebody, or you say thank you to somebody, you do it according to knowledge. Amen? Amen. But if everybody is saying thank you and you join the chorus, without knowing what you are saying, you don't get the full blessing. We serve an awesome God. We serve an awesome God. Yesterday I took my Bible and I read through the prophecies and the signs that were mentioned prior to the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. I was amazed. One after the other was fulfilled before the Lord came. Sixty prophecies and signs. Each one of them. That's the God we have as our God. Jesus said, I've told you these things. That in me, you may have peace. In this world, you will face many, many troubles. But be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. We live in very testing times. Jesus himself said in Matthew 24, that the times are so bad that even the very elect will hardly be saved. He also said, as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be before he comes. Now remember that in Genesis chapter 6, when we have the record of that event, the writer said that there was wickedness at the highest peak before the Lord moved in. If you know something about our God, He's very precise about everything that He does. With the Lord, there's a timing. Amen? With the Lord, there's a season. With the Lord, there's a purpose and a plan. You are here today not by accident. You are here today because the Lord wants you here. This morning I'm going to be talking about several things that the Lord drops into my spirit. But essentially we are going to be looking at how to survive these times. How to do what? Survive these times. Kingdom solutions. <laughs> Let me just share these few things. Jesus speaking. I'm not going to go into detail because you know those scriptures already. But I think some are important to highlight. And the gospel of the kingdom will be preached in the whole world as a testimony to the nations. And then the end will come. The gospel of the kingdom will be preached in all the nations and then the end will come. And then uh, let me jump to 22. He says if those, those days were not cut short, no one will survive. But for the sake of the elect, those days will be shortened. 
Amen. Bang for your sake. Those days will be shortened. Now remember that in Noah's days, only eight people entered the ark. Eight people were saved from the flood. Well, let me tell this story before I, I even move on. There's a man, a friend of mine, his name is Bishop Levy. Three months ago, something happened to him. He suffered a very massive brain hemorrhage, which resulted in a stroke. Levy went into coma. I arrived the day that he had a stroke. And um, my wife told me, your friend will not make it through the night. But I did a check in, I checked into my spirit. And the spirit didn't tell me that he was going to die. So I told my wife, I'm going to sleep. So I went to bed. The following day I went to the hospital and he was in coma. He was in the coma for two days. In fact, they wanted to put the plug. And his wife said, no, give him a chance. So they allowed him to live for two days. To cut a long story short, Levy is alive. No paralysis. His brain is functioning 100%. The other thing is that because of the coma, he has to learn how to walk again. So the spirit kept on prompting me to ask him what happened during those times when he was gone. And fortunately, his wife wrote down what he said. Levi was taken up into the sky. An angel took him and put him in his bosom, flew him to the skies and took him somewhere, many places. And then he showed him something that I think pastors here should take note of. Many pastors were marching around a mountain because they missed it. And God took Levi to the back of that park and said, these pastors have missed it. But I want to give them a second chance. They had to preach my word in truth, in righteousness, because I am righteous. If they don't do it, I will come with vengeance. Brothers and sisters in the Lord, God loves us. Amen? Amen. Even natural, in the natural life, if a, a friend or a relative is being thrown into prison, we cry. Don't we? But when a friend or a, a loved one is being thrown into an eternal punishment in hell, how do we do? See, in this world, we only have two choices. God or the devil. Amen? You choose God and you live eternally in his heavenly kingdom. You reject him and there's only other, one other option. There's always that tension between the flesh and the spirit. Jesus went through it. Matthew chapter 4. The temptation. Here was a man who fasted for 40 days and 40 nights. He was genuinely hungry. And then the, the enemy showed up. He said, look, all you have to do is command these stones and they become what? Bread. Right. He had the power to do it. It's Jesus. The Son of God. But what was his answer? It is written. It is what? Written. That you must not live by bread alone. But by every word. 
that comes out of the, the mouth of the Father. Hallelujah. Amen. Jesus overcame by quoting the scripture back to the devil. Satan never did some. He took him to a big, a tall, tall mountain. He said, look at the earth. Look at all the glory. Do just a simple thing. Bow down to me and all will be yours. Of course, he said, you better. So he said, worship God alone. He said, I didn't stop there. He says, where well, it is written, that when you jump from anywhere, God will not allow your feet to hit the ground. It's true. Jesus is God. But what did he say? You don't tempt your father. You don't tempt God. So he passes by. See, there's always that tension between the flesh and the spirit. Amen? Amen. So this morning, I'm sharing three things with you to help you to make the right choice. Many good people, many wonderful men and women of God, somewhere along the line compromise because they could not resist that pressure. Either from their own selves, their, their flesh, their needs. People are sick. So you tell him, go to somebody who can do something for you, and the person is gone. People are hungry. So you give him a formula, and he goes after the formula. The flesh is our number one enemy. John said, the last of the eyes, the last of the flesh, the prayerful things of this life, anyone who practices them will not enter the kingdom of God. Amen? See, God is big. God is wise. God is perfect. And he's our father. What else you need? He told Jeremiah, he said, ask me. Just call upon me. And I will show you great and mighty things which you do not know. God. I think sometimes we, we just, we, we, we bring God to our level. We bring him to our smallness. But let me tell you in the book of Genesis chapter 1. When God decided to make the world and to make man, it was his desire that we would be exactly like him, that we would have his life, that we would have his character, and that we would be able to participate in the kingdom work. Hallelujah. Did it change? No. Satan came with deception. And I'm telling you, Satan is still, still a deceiver. That's all he has. He will just come in and add a little bit of untruth to the truth, and then he's gotten it. But God's perfect plan for you is to become like his son, Jesus. Amen? That's your purpose for being here. The second Adam. The Bible says the first one was what? A living soul. The second one was what? A quickening spirit. In other words, you can reproduce yourself through the gospel. We have to be like Jesus. To have his life in us and to have our lives in him. In John 10, 16, that I quoted, Jesus said, In this world, you will have trouble, but be of good cheer. 
because I have overcome the world. John, I mean, the, 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 the Apostle Luke, in chapter 17, he says that in him we live and move and have a being. It began the day you accepted the Lord into your life as your personal Savior. If you remember the day you accepted Jesus into your life, you became what? A child of God. The Spirit of God came into you to give you the life of God. The other day I was um, very disturbed when I heard something. I received a, a text message actually. And they were announcing that the prophetess was in town. And then they qualified it by saying that she can hear from God. <laughs> so my question is, brother and sister, if you are a child of God, can't you hear from God? Don't you have the ability to hear from God? That's the first solution for this morning. God wants us to hear from him. Jesus said, my sheep know my voice. And they follow me. Are you a sheep? Are you his child? Then you have to know his voice. Because we need that voice very, very much this time. As we draw closer and closer to the end. Because more and more deceivers are going to come. It says even the very elect will be disguised, will be deceived. Because of the intelligence and the wickedness of the last day prophets, miracle workers, to deceive many and draw them into the wrong side. We must hear the word of God. We must hear the voice of God. That's why I thank the Lord for the emphasis that you have here on prayer. If you want God to talk to you, you have to talk to him. Amen? Amen. The Lord will not just come up to you to speak to you unless you talk to him. He says, come to me and I will come to you. He's God. So Jesus exemplified prayer. The first thing he did before he entered the ministry was what? Pray. The Bible has a record of many times when he woke up in the morning, early in the morning, to pray. Jesus, the Son of God, made prayer his priority. This is a time when everybody who has any hope of spending eternity with Jesus in the heavenly realms must make prayer top priority. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Listen for the voice of God. God speaks. You have what Pastor Boyfield said to our big brother. Where did he come from? God spoke into his spirit. And he passed it on. But the Lord wants to do the same thing for every one of us here. Hallelujah. Because we are all his children. Let's talk with God. Yesterday I sat down and I was thinking of the many hours we have in the day. 24 hours. Probably you have a job that takes you probably 8 hours of work a day. You may sleep another 8 hours. That's 16, eh? You still have 8 hours. And even whilst you are sleeping, I always tell the Lord, Lord, speak to me in my sleep. Let me pray in my sleep. When you are working, be in tune with the Spirit of God. Amen. Let the Spirit of God guide you in everything that you do. So you will not err. He's our life. He's our life. Be of good cheer. I have overcome. Whatever the, 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 the challenges may be in your life, no matter the magnitude of the problems, whatever it is, Jesus is saying to you, be of good cheer because what? 
I have overcome. Talk to him. Talk to him. He's not far from you. It's just a prayer away. And let me tell you something. God doesn't have any favorites. He's no respecter of peasants. What he will do with me, he will do with my pastor boy, he will do with you, anybody who is here. Yes, sir. Because he loves us. With an everlasting love. All he requires of us is to draw near to him. Hallelujah. So, listen for the voice of God in your inner man. Then when you hear a contrary voice, you can say no. Because the contrary voice will speak to you too. Amen. Amen. Number two, walk in the spirit. Walk in what? In the spirit. Paul said, they that walk in the spirit, they are what? The sons of God. Why, do, why, why, should, why must we walk in the spirit? Because God is spirit. Amen? Amen. The Bible says, they that walk in the flesh are what? Do die. To be carnally minded is what? Death. Because see, the body, the physical things, suffer decay. They age. And eventually they die. God is from everlasting to everlasting. And his spirit, you can see him. So in order for you to connect with God, you have to go beyond the physical. And that's a, a, a big challenge for many. But I have good news for you. See, when God made Adam and Eve, the Bible says that after forming them, he put his own spirit into them. So the spirit of God is actually inside of you. Jesus said the kingdom of God is where? Ah. See, we perish for lack of knowledge. We think that somebody has it, but they don't have it. Because you, 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 you underestimate yourself or you think that because of a sin in your life or something that you have done wrong. Jesus poured his life blood for you. And the Bible says that God has saved to the uttermost all those who do what? Who came to him. And then he continued to sanctify them through the sprinkling. You are covered. You are covered. Approach the throne boldly. And God will respond to you. In 2 Timothy 1 7, Paul said, God did not give us the spirit of fear. But he gave us the spirit of boldness. Preachers, let's be bold. Of love. And a sound mind. So if you go to sleep and you cannot sleep, that's a problem. Years ago, I told the Lord, he said to David, Psalm 127, verse 2, I believe, he said he gives his beloved sleep. I said, Lord, am I not your beloved? I want to sleep. So I go to bed at 8 o'clock and I sleep till the morning. Five. To pray. Hallelujah. Because God is a respecter of his word. We have not because we ask not. And when we ask, we don't receive because we ask with wrong motives. That's what James said. Your father loves you. Amen? You are part of his, his eternal plan. He has a purpose for your life. He wants you to ask him. When my children ask me for things, I'm happy. Because they make me feel important. <laughs> Amen? Amen? Won't God do better than that? So talk to God very often. Walk in the Spirit. If you want to know how to walk in the Spirit, talk to Pastor Matthew. 
It will show you how to work in the story. Talk to Bata Kojo. They know how to work in the story. Working in the spirit means that you don't lean on your own understanding. You know David? David will go to God for every little thing. He didn't trust his own mind. Jesus said, unless you become like a little one, a little baby, who is so trusting, so dependent upon the parents, you cannot make it to the kingdom of God. Trust God for everything. You never get enough experience to be away from God. Never. My God. I've been in the ministry for many years. I still go to God as a, like a little child. Because he's the only one who has the answer. Hallelujah. Walk in the spirit. Galatians 5.16 says that walk in the spirit that you will not want. You will not fulfill the desires of the flesh. So if you have a problem with sin, it's simple. Walk in the spirit that you will not fulfill the desires of the flesh. So do a Bible study on, on how to walk in the spirit. Hallelujah. And then sin, sin will not be a problem for you anymore. Hallelujah. And thirdly, do it right. Righteousness. Walk in accordance to the word of God. The Bible says that Jesus Christ lived a sinless life because he relied totally upon the Father. And the same Jesus says, because my Father is holy, you must also be what? Holy. So holiness is part of it. If we want to please the Lord, we must we will live a life of holiness. Amen? Amen? And for us all who preach, they give us one message. It's a message of the kingdom of God. You know, the all of creation centered around Jesus. Jesus was in the Old Testament. Jesus is in the New Testament. Ask me why? Because he's the son. Amen? Amen? Those of you who have sons, understand. God made everything for his son. And then he made us co heirs with him. Join heirs with him. Because we have also become what? Sons and daughters. Hallelujah. Amen. So if you want to touch the heart of the father, you cannot ignore the son. Amen? Amen. Paul said to T Timothy, actually he said it to the church of Corinth, he says, follow me as what? I follow Christ. First Corinthians 11, 1 Corinthians 11.1. Follow me as I do what? Follow Christ. How did he follow Christ? By spending time in prayer and allow him to work out the character of God inside of him. Because Jesus said, apart from me, you can do nothing. Amen? Amen. Apart from me, you can do what? Amen. Nothing. So the son is our model. We learn from him. Matthew 11, 28, 29. Jesus says, Come to me, all ye who labor and are heavy laden. Now do what? Give you rest. And come and do what? Learn of me. Come and let me teach you. For I'm humble and I'm meek. Amen? Amen. The Bible says that God opposes the proud. Just imagine God opposing you. What chance do you have? 